What's up YouTube, we're back with another lead code SQL problem. This one is marked as easy, but it uses regular expressions, which can be very tricky. So let's solve this one together, get into it. So this one's numbered 1517, find users with valid emails, part of SQL 50, part of the advanced drink functions, regex clause section, because it uses regular expressions. And yeah, it's a very last question of SQL 50. So if you're doing them in order and you made it here, congrats, you're about to get the bet after solving this one. Yeah. This one has just one table users. It seems pretty easy, but the regular expression can be tricky. So yeah, the input table we have has a user ID, name and mail, which is the email address we're concerned about. Our task is to write a solution to find the users who have valid emails. A valid email has a prefix name and a domain where the prefix name is a string that may contain letters, up or lowercase, digits, underscore, period, and or dash the prefix name must start with a letter. First element of the prefix needs to be a letter. The domain is, lead, is at leadcode.com, so the email always ends in at leadcode.com, and we should return the result table in any order. Here is some example data. So we would have user ID just being an integer, first name, and then the email address. Winston at leadcode.com seems to be a valid email, so it's part of our output. Then Jonathan has, Jonathan is great without any domain. So that is not a valid email. We have Bella or Annabelle who has bella dash at leadcode.com, which is valid. Sally.com at leadcode.com is also valid. While Quars hash 2020 at leadcode.com is not valid because it has a hash symbol. So yeah, there's a couple more examples in there, but we pretty much what would know what we want. Now it's just about translating that into a filter to use in our data and in our query. In terms of the output, we just basically want to have everything in the output that we have in the input in terms of column. So we can select star from this table called users. And now it's really about filtering to mails or users that have a valid email address. So we need to be using a regular expression here to filter that table to valid email addresses. Usually if you're concerned with checking strings or just a column value with characters, you could use something like the like operator substring function is to check does it contain at leadcode.com or something. But for this one, this one is getting a bit complex in terms of starting with a letter, having only upper lowercase letters, digits, underscore, period, and or dash. So it's combining a lot of things. And as soon as you're doing that, you're most likely better off using a regular expression to sort of explain the format that you expect in a regular expression and then use that as a filter to apply to the actual values you have and then check does that match the filter, the logic that I'm writing down. So yeah, for substring, for example, you would have a specific string you're looking for in the mail address, but here we're sort of explaining the logic that we want to exp explain. There's a certain format to that and that's what a regular expression is if you don't know. So in order to translate that into SQL code, we will say where mail, usually we, we would use equal or another operator here, but there is an operator for regular expression where reg exp and then the regular expression follows. So where the regular expression that we are about to input here matches mail or just the, ev the evaluation of mail against the regular expression returns true. This matches the regular expression where mail matches that regular expression. There's another way of doing that in MySQL or MySQL. You could use regexp like, which is a function instead of an operator. And then you would have your regular expression here as a string. Yeah, I'm keeping to the old format. I sort of like the operator format syntax. We just have your column and then what you want to do with it or what you want to check and then the string. So I'm doing that. I'm pasting the regular expression here and I'll walk you through it. But yeah, 
it'll be hard to remember that and come up with it on the top of your head. I wouldn't expect candidates to know how to construct this on top of their head in an interview. Honestly, these days, if you were at the job, you would probably use ChatGPT or another large language model to come up with a regular expression, then test it, make sure it does what you want, depending on how complex it is, and then just use that. So I think the point of an SQL interview is checking whether you know the basics of SQL, how to filter things, join tables, use aggregate functions, combine things, but not necessarily know the syntax for regular expression. So I wouldn't be concerned with you having to do that. If you were getting something along the lines, then the company yeah, wouldn't have the best <laughs> interview questions. And you could always explain your sort of logic that you want to translate here in, in pseudocode, just explaining what you want to do. But I guess we already have the explanation in the problem statement where our task is to actually write the regular expression. So I'll just explain the regular expression here. So this symbol, this character, denotes that this is where our regular expression starts. So we're expecting the following format as the first character. This is in brackets and denotes that we expect a lowercase letter from A to Z or an uppercase letter from A to Z as the first element which yeah, is denoted, uh, denoted here as the prefix name starting with a letter. It must start with a letter. That's what we denote here. So overall, you could say that this prefix, this prefix has two parts, the first being a letter and then something else. Then you'd have the domain, which is at leadcode.com. So getting to the second part of the prefix, which is this expression here in brackets, it could also be a lowercase letter or an uppercase letter. It could be digits from zero to nine, just denoted here, zero to nine, an underscore, a period or a dash. And that is anything that we could expect in here. So in terms of the regular expression syntax, it is just it would just be this sort of range, A to Z lowercase, A to Z uppercase, zero to nine, and then these characters it is followed by a star indicating that this whatever is in this bracket this could appear zero to n times so it could not appear at all you just have the first part of the prefix being a letter and then nothing and then at leadcode.com so a valid email address could be a at leadcode.com or just uppercase b at leadcode.com you would be fine but you could also have an unlimited amount of characters that are in that range after that so yeah one thing to actually check if this was a real e email address is how long is the entire email address because i wouldn't want it to be ten thousand characters hopefully but yeah this is not part of the question but a good thing to call out Yes. So yeah, to, this just says this could be however many times and us not supplying anything after that first bracket for the letter that the email address has to start with. That means it should appear once. So it should start with this and then it could be this however many times. It is followed by at leadcode.com. So we're just spelling that out for the dot. This is this can sort of be picked up by the regular expression as a character that could be anything, a sort of a wild card. It could be a question mark, could be other things. So in order to not have that happen, we will use a double backslash to escape that character and denote that it's actually a point. I think another way to do it would be to use brackets here again and say, yeah, this should actually be a dot. But yeah, this is necessary to make sure it's actually a dot. Yeah, and every regular expression should be ended with a dollar sign. That's just good practice. I think it would run without, but that is just recommended a good best practice. So good thing to keep in mind and actually do. So if we run that and submit that, that should be accepted and do what we want. 
I think the point of this question is explaining that regular expressions exist and that you can use them in SQL to do very powerful comparisons, make sure a column value matches a certain format you expect. And that's about it. I'm going to go through all of lead code SQL 50. So if you're not doing it in order, I have a whole playlist on all of the questions that you can still do. If you did them in order, congrats on getting there. I think you have a great foundation. Now it's really just practicing things that you're not too comfortable with, and then you should be very confident going into your interviews. Yeah, if you want to follow along for more content, more general content, make sure to subscribe to the channel to get more lead code or start a straight SQL problems and general advice for starting a career or advancing your career in data science or data analytics. I'll see you there. Thanks for taking part of the Lead Code SQL 50 challenge if you did. Bye-bye.